Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we are going to do some Bash Shell scripting and learn about using relational operators with strings. In order to do so, we'll also talk about using conditions such as if and else. If you need any help setting up a new shell script, make sure to watch the first video in the series where we talk about what Bash Shell scripting is and how to create and run your first script. All right, let's get into things now. I'm going to start up my terminal real quick, and I'm here in my documents folder where I've been saving my scripts. If I do ls, you can see the various scripts that we have available to us. What I'm going to do is copy the relational operators script and create a second one with str at the end, and that's the one we will be running today. After I have that copied over, I'm going to go ahead and use nano in order to open up the script that I just got done copying which is the relational operators str stands for string dot sh and once i have that opened up we're going to take advantage of the script we had from before and just change some things around in order to make it work for strings so we've kind of already set things up a little bit you see we have two strings here uh, what i'll do first is i'm going to go ahead and change the variable name to be something different i'm going to call it str1 and str2 here also, if you're new and stopping by to watch a scripting video today, make sure to go ahead and subscribe below and hit the notification bell for future videos. All right, we'll keep the two strings in here the same. The way I know these are strings is because we have these quotes around our text, which denotes a string. And then in the if statement, since we changed up the variable's name, we'll go ahead and replace them here as well. So that just str stands for string. So I'm just comparing string one to string two. And currently string one has string written in it and string two also has string written in it. So the very first operator that we're gonna go ahead and work with is the equivalence operator to check if one string is equal to another. So let me go ahead and remove some of these comments up above that way we can go ahead and use them for strings instead and work our way through all the various different relational operators. All right, for our first operator, we'll use the equal sign. So all this does is check if two strings are the same. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So I'm gonna take away this exclamation point. And the one other thing I have to do in order to explicitly tell the bash processor that these are strings that are going to be tested we need to put quotes around the variables also so let's go ahead and do that as you can see here now i have string one in quotes and string two in quotes with the dollar sign in front of them meaning that they are variables but they're string variables so let's go ahead and save this by hitting Control x and saving the buffer after we do that, let's go ahead and run our relational operators string.sh script. And you can see that the output was true. So let's go back using nano and check how we got to true. So we check this if statement and we just said if string one is equal to string two, which string one is currently string and string two is currently string. If they're equal to each other, then we're gonna spit out true Otherwise, we'd spit out false. So let's go ahead and make it false just so you can see how this works. So I'm gonna put one as string one and one as string two. Now these two strings sh should not be true. So we can go ahead and do control X and check out what running the script is gonna do now. So if we do that, you can see we got false as expected. Very good. So going back in the nano, so it's very easy to go ahead and check for the equivalence of strings. There is uh, one other method to do this as well. If you want, you can use a double equal sign, which in some programming languages, there's double equals in order to check for equivalence. And this just kind of gives you another method in order to use. Again, this just checks if two strings are the same, but it does require a little bit of a different format here. If we go ahead and use double equals, we're going to have to put an extra bracket here at the end, at the front, and then we'll just put it double equals in the middle, and that, and that should be enough to test the equivalence if you like using double equals. So let's go ahead and save this and rerun it so we can check and see that it's still false. Great. So going back into nano, instead of checking if they're the same, let's check if two strings are not the same. So if we do not equal, that will check if two strings are not the same. So right now, if we have string one and string two, we can just say not equal here. So what would we expect? For the str1 variable, we have string one. For the str2 variable, we have string two. Therefore, 
string one is not equal to string two and we should echo true. So let's go ahead and save this again and try it once more. And you can see now we get true, meaning the two strings are not equal. So now you know how to use a not equal operator as well. What the double brackets here allow us to do is pattern match, and we'll go ahead and keep using them throughout the rest of our relational operators. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button, it really does help me out. All right, and then the next operator we'll talk about is equals with a tilde. This will allow us to check our string variable with a regular expression that we define, allowing us to find specific characters, letters, numbers, symbols inside of a string. So this is does the string on the left match the regular expression on the right. So let's go ahead and give that a shot real quick. So I'm going to erase string two because we won't be using that one this time. We only need one string for our, testing our regular expression. And for this regular expression, I'm just going to check if at least one occurrence of str occurs inside the str1 string variable. So let's go ahead and make a save. Yes, we want the buffer modified and run it. As you can see here, we got true because if we go back to our program, str does show up at least once in side of this string one. Of course, there's many, many different ways you can make a regular expression and check for things such as case sensitivity, alphanumeric strings, as well as just numbers whatever you want, I'll let you go ahead and look up various different forms of regular expressions, but know that you can use this operator to check those regular expressions. One other thing I forgot to mention then is with the double equal, you can also check since we're using double brackets, if we have some pattern matching. And we can do this by putting two asterisks, which just means anything can exist in front or after whatever string is in here, which I'm just gonna search for this string exist inside of str1? Well, it should because there is string in here. So let's go ahead and just try that out. It's another nice way of being able to pattern match. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save this and rerun the program. As you can see, it says true. It did find that pattern inside of it. So just be aware of that. And following that, let's just talk about a few other things here. So we have the greater than symbol as well as the less than symbol. So what these two symbols do is test the alphabetical order of strings. So, and so does this one, but let's go ahead and test and see what the difference is. So if we go ahead and just say, is str1 greater than str2? Let's check if that's true or false. We go ahead and do control X, save the buffer, and let's rerun. So it says false. Now, what if we do the other way around? So we should expect true. Well, with the first one, we did greater than. So it tested if string one was greater than string two, meaning does string one show up later in the dictionary than string two? If everything was in alphabetical order, no, it would not. String one would show up first. So that's why string one is not greater than string two, and we got a false. Now with the opposite test, the string one show up sooner in the dictionary than string two? Well, yes it does, so it's going to be true. So just to keep it simple, we'll say, does the string on the left come after string on right in alphabetical order? And then here does the string on the left come before string on right in alphabetical order. All right, and we just have a couple more things. We have dash Z and dash N, which will check if a string is empty or not empty. So this one is, is a string empty meaning that there's no character supplied to the string. And the second one is a string not empty, meaning that there are characters supplied. All right, in order to check if a string is empty, then we just go down here and we can say dash Z and then name our string that we want to check if it's empty. And I'll get rid of these extra brackets now because we don't need them. We're not doing any pattern matching. So let's go ahead and save our program once more and rerun it.
As you can see, it's false because currently our string, which we're checking, which is str2, is not empty. It has string inside of it. So let's see if we go ahead and get rid of everything inside of str2 if we get true. And you can see we got true this time. Following that, let's go ahead and just try the dash n to check if the string is not empty. So if we do dash n, and let's just check string one this time, str1. And currently it's not empty, so we should expect true. So we're gonna save, exit out of here, and rerun, and we get true, great. And the last thing we can try is of course getting rid of what's in str1, and we should get false this time. And we do. So congrats if you made it this far. You've now learned about using relational operators as well as pattern matching in Bash shell scripting. This is great to know as you're getting input from a user into some of your Bash scripts. It's great to be able to check strings and make sure that you're getting a proper input from the user. Well, I hope you enjoyed this Bash shell scripting tutorial on Linux. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions. Please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.